Hello, everybody. Aspect number four of what I appreciate about this great man, Paul the Apostle. No, he was not a woman hater, as people like to, to think. Uh, he was a deep, passionate Christian man. And what was the controlling reality in his life? I'll tell you what it was, and it really is quite simple. And it ought to be said over and over again, for what is true of Paul can be and should be true of you and me. And that reality was this, and he speaks about the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, here was a man who had been completely overwhelmed by the love of God. Having met Jesus, he understood that to know Jesus was to know God. And from having been a bitter and angry man, his hardened heart is melted. And you see this man on the ground, on the road to, Desma to Damascus, and God is working in him. God is flooding his soul with love. A love that I suspect he'd never known before. He meant well. He was very zealous. He was very committed, very earnest. But it seems that he seldom, if ever, had ever experienced the love of God and go through all these letters that he writes. And he talks about this and that. But it always keeps coming back to the love of God that he has experienced in Christ Jesus, my Lord. He was a man who loved God. He was a man who loved those with whom he interacted. And believe it or not, you know, when you talk to some people about the essence of the gospel being love, some will say, yes, but, you know, there's this, that. There are no yes, buts. It is about the love of God. The good news of Jesus is about the love of God that has come into this world in Christ, who loves you, who has given himself for you and for me. I live Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. He loves me, said Paul, and gave himself for me. I mean, look at my life, he says. Remember what I used to be. Did anybody deserve such love? If ever there was somebody who should have been absolutely judged and condemned, it was me. But no. I look at the cross, and I understand this truth, that God loves me, and gave himself for me. And I tell you, that was the, the root, that was the fountain, the living fountain, from which this man and his incredible ministry flowed. Who shall separate us from the love of God, he writes in Romans, and he lists shall tribulation, shall distress, shall famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, he says. In all these things we are more than conquerors. For I am persuaded, these are great words, you find them right at the end of Romans 8, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor thing present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will ever be able to separate us, me, you, from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hey, I would love to have Paul at my dinner table, our dinner table, and just ask him, Paul, speak to us of the love of God. And doubtless, uh, I would have asked him to have led our meal with grace, thanking God for the meal. And he might have used words that he wrote to the Ephesians when he said, this is what I pray for you folk there in Ephesus, that you will know something of how 
wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of God that is in Christ. A love that goes beyond even our knowledge of it. Hey, the love of God. Uh, that's what I want you not just to think about, but to sit quietly somewhere and thank him for the way in which he loves you and has given your, himself for you. The love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God bless you.